This presentation is about how important stomach acid is for human health. I know that I am incredibly grateful to know about the importance of stomach acid. I personally had low stomach acid and that caused a lot of different issues for me. So I'd like to share what I know with you so that you can uh, produce adequate stomach acid and know why you wanna do that. So stomach acid is important because it's the body's first pass at sterilizing food. So we want a nice low pH so that anything that's on foods that we eat that can be killed by stomach acid that will really reduce our risk of foodborne illnesses. We also want food to be broken down into smaller particles so that the nutrients that are in the food we're eating are actually available for our body to use. We don't want microbes or yeast uh, residing in the small intestine and adequate stomach acid really uh, helps with that. A lot of people with IBS type symptoms actually have bacteria or yeast residing where it doesn't belong as a result of inadequate stomach acid. And um, the nitric oxide miracle molecule is uh, produced via this pathway only in the presence of adequate stomach acid. So we won't produce adequate nitric oxide, which is responsible for so many, almost every function in the body. It's a messenger molecule, and we need stomach acid to produce it. When we don't have enough, we don't digest properly. We absorb fewer nutrients because they're not broken down for us into smaller molecules. We get bacterial overgrowth and yeast. And when those things are able to touch the lining of our intestine, the overgrowth of the harmful bacteria, they really irritate it and cause the junctions within the intestines that should be tight so the foods we eat don't get out into our circulation to become leaky. So, And then proteins can slide right out through those leaky junctions and cause a lot of inflammation and other problems in the body. So adequate stomach acid is important to prevent uh, gut permeability and again inadequate nitric oxide production and i love this little picture because it's showing that we should be eating foods that are full of vitamins and minerals they do things for us in our body and um, we need those food particles to be broken down by stomach acid so that we can get the nutrients out of the food so again, without adequate stomach acid, microbes can exist in the small intestine and beyond and where they don't belong, really irritate that intestinal lining and cause what should be tight junctions to become leaky. And this is thought to be a cause of not only food sensitivities and neurodegenerative diseases, but autoimmunity as well, because some of the proteins that slide out into the greater circulation mimic human tissue. It's called molecular mimicry. And then the body will start to attack itself, unsure whether um, the protein that looks just like human tissue is what's at play versus our own tissue. So that that is uh, what's going on with that. And you can measure whether or not you have gut permeability with a marker called zonulin. And that's something that I always order on the GI map test that I do for people. It's an add-on test and it's well worth it to see whether or not you have gut permeability. Acid blockers were never intended to be used for more than six weeks. Uh, we have shelves and shelves of them for people to choose from. Again, you can't produce adequate nitric oxide if you take acid blockers, especially for people who are over 40 years old. And long-term acid blocker use is associated with higher risk of cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, and that's actually because of the nitric oxide production. Like I was just saying, nitric oxide uh, keeps our blood pressure in a good range and uh, causes some vasodilation in the body and all kinds of things that are beneficial for our health. And at the end of the day, most people who take acid blockers actually have low stomach acid. The sphincters that control the, the, whether acid is flowing into the esophagus or staying in the stomach are controlled by the presence of adequate stomach acid. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, those sphincters will not get the message to close and the acid will reflux back up into the esophagus and people get the sensation of heartburn and then take acid blockers, which is only making the problem worse. How can we optimize stomach acid production? We wanna reduce stress in our lives. We wanna make time for self-care and utilize tools that help us feel less stressed. And this is because when we are stressed, it does reduce 
stomach acid and can that can lead to all of the different things that I've talked about throughout the presentation. So stress management is critical for adequate stomach acid. Long duration and high intensity exercise can be another cause of low stomach acid because when we're really going for it, when we're doing a very long or hard workout, our blood flow is obviously diverted away from our digestive organs into our muscles and that can lead to low stomach acid and again a variety of issues arise just from not having enough stomach acid. Um, so I do testing on all my clients to see whether or not stomach acid is adequate. It's a super easy test to do and reach out to me if you are interested in trying it.